Friday Night Football, and it's my side, of course, it had to be against Southampton at the Emirates. The big question is, can Arsenal bounce back against Southampton? Is there a better opponent that you want to face off of two consecutive games with two drop points from two goals up? I don't think so. I mean, yeah. this is one match I can say I'm very confident to it. Mm -hmm. This is looking like a, a, a good three points for us here. This this should not only be three points, but this should be a plus five on your goal difference. If if not plus six, plus seven. Big question though for, for you. Do you think Party is going to come back with his shenanigans like he did in the last match? Well, to be honest, I think this is a perfect opportunity for Arteta to drop him. I mean, he, he caught him out in the interview. What better way to send his message than to, to drop him from the lineup? And what again, what better opponent than last place team, Southampton? So you think Jorginho should start against Southampton? Well, if he's trying to send a message, yeah. Because he he clearly was. That's that's what I got, at least in the interview. Well, what's important right now? What's more important right now? The message or the performance to win the title? Even without Partey, Arsenal should be thrashing Southampton. Simple as. But the question is, will Arsenal go with Partey or Jorginho? I mean, if it, if I were, I'm not, I'm not Arteta, if I were Arteta, I would go with Jorginho. And on top of that, I, I might even drop Saka. He looked tired. I mean, he, he maybe he needs to rest, you know, just, and again, it's Southampton. You can, you can get away with it. So what are you saying for that front line then? Trossard slots right in? It, it could even be in Ketia, get it, get him, get him some, some minutes. He won't start most likely, but. Yeah, as a sub, even you know, Jesus, Trossard, Martin, you can put in, you can even put Nelson in there though. Like it's they're they're all gonna do the job against Southampton. I do like Nelson. So what are you saying then? Confirm Arsenal victory. I guess that's looking like it. Boy, anything, oh boy. Anything less than a five goal margin would be very disappointing. Wow. Okay. You're going. You're going real ham right now. This is that's what I think about Liverpool though. I think Liverpool are going to destroy Nottingham Forest. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Did you watch them last week? Them as in I, I guess it could apply to Liverpool too. They thrashed Leeds. Uh, but I'm talking about Forest. Forest looked down and out. Damn. Yeah, I don't see any hope in this one for Forest, but we do know that Forest beat them in the last match or in the reverse fixture. So maybe that's playing on the minds a bit. That was a good five months ago. Or was it three months ago? I think it was before the World Cup. And times have changed massively for both, not only Liverpool, but also for Forest. Winless in 10 now. Yeah, yo. I I don't know. I just, I don't see any hope for them. Do you think they're going to end up getting relegated? I, I mean, I, I'm worried. Them and Leicester are the two teams that I'm worried about. I mean, Southampton, we, we've already admitted they're pretty much down. Among all those teams, yeah, it has to be Forest. Because you look at Everton, they have, they've got Sean Dyche. Leeds, they've always got a goal in them, a goal or two in them. West Ham look like they're going to be on the ups. Bournemouth, they're, they're showing some unity and spirit. And Wolves, they've always had quality. You know, they don't give much away. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's got to be Forest or, or, or Leicester at this point. And Forest are, are, are in big trouble. I I just don't see where where the the turnaround comes from, you know. Leicester have sacked the manager. Southampton have sacked the manager. Everton have. Leeds have. Bournemouth have. I know this was in the beginning of the season. Wolves have, except for Forest. What are, do you think Jesse Lingard is gonna end up playing then in the championship? Can you imagine Jesse Lingard in the championship? I mean, the deal's only for a year, but. Can you think of a bigger failure of a signing for both club and a player than than Jesse Lingard signing on 200k a week for Forrest? Yeah, that's terrible. That is just terrible. The guy is on the bench. The guy can't even he, he can't even beat out a, a 20 year old Morgan Gibbs White. I know he was signed for a record uh, fee for Forrest, but still, the guy was supposed to come in, 
and be the leader for these guys. And just hasn't worked out at all. Yeah, enough on Liverpool, Nottingham Forest. I mean, we know what's going to happen here. Liverpool going to thrash Nottingham Forest. That's, that's a definite prediction. Moving on to a match that I think is a lot more interesting. A battle for the top four potentially here. Newcastle versus Tottenham. I think this is going to be a topsy-turvy affair. But I think Newcastle are going to end up with the victory. So, between Newcastle and Tottenham, whoever wins this game, do you think they qualify for the Champions League? I would say if Newcastle win the game, they qualify for the Champions League. I won't say the same for Tottenham. Well, I actually think the opposite. I think either of these sides, whoever goes on to win this game, will qualify for the Champions League. Because if it's Newcastle, then it opens up a huge gap, six points, with a, still a game in hand over Tottenham. If Tottenham win, they close the gap to zero points, and the momentum turns around. So I think whoever wins this game qualifies for the Champions League spot. Now, this game, of course, I can't lose. I mean, they're both our direct rivals for top four. I'm hoping for a draw. Uh, last game, I mean, what did you think went wrong for Newcastle? Just, I mean, defensively, they, they conceded three goals, right? What did you think went wrong for Newcastle against Villa when they conceded three? I don't know. Like, as he said, defensively, I don't know what happened to them. But I think they should have taken their chances. It's not like they didn't create chances. They definitely had chances to get back into the game and or even equalize. But they were not clinical and it cost them. Do you think that the pressure is getting to Newcastle now? Because before, they weren't expected to right make it to the Champions League spot. But now I think the pressure is on them to finish in the top four spot. It might be, because this is a position that Newcastle really haven't been near. Like The players have not been near this type of, this type of battle. And the manager as well, a young manager who doesn't really have that kind of know-how as opposed to even a team like Tottenham who have qualified for the Champions League several times in the past and who know how to kind of get over the line where that is concerned. I don't know if that's playing in Newcastle's heads, that level of inexperience. It, it just might, it might cost him in the end. And what about on the Tottenham side? I mean, they go away. They've been incons consistently inconsistent, whether it's be home or away. What do you think is the key to this game? Attack the right-hand side of Newcastle? The thing is, that's definitely... Well, Tottenham find a lot of creativity and strength on that side with Kulisevsky. But I think with Tottenham just on a whole, they're just missing that foundation at the moment. Losing the manager, they're just all over the place right now. They're in shambles, just disorganized. Just They just don't have it right now. Everything's just all over the place. Mentally, they're not there. And I think that is way more crucial in that race for the top four, especially in the position that they're in, where they're, gonna, they're probably going to fall short. Not yeah. only in this match, but in the race for the, for the Champions League. Yeah, and, and like I mentioned... They have three crucial and tough games coming up. Newcastle, United, and, and Liverpool. How many points are you expecting out of Tottenham? <laughs> Wait, no, who is not, not hoping, it's expecting. Wait, hold on. You said Newcastle, Man U, who? Liverpool at Anfield. <laughs> Honestly, the only game I see them getting points in, and it might only be one, is Man U. I'm sorry to say, but that's only because you guys are depleted at the moment. Yeah, I mean Tottenham are Tottenham. I mean it's it's, it's they're what that's what they're famous for. But I I am worried about that game. If 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 Tottenham do lose this game, I mean their backs are against the wall, you know. So I'm I'm kind of hoping for a draw. Of course, you know your rivals go against each other. The best result oftentimes is is a draw. But I I have a feeling that Newcastle are gonna be able to get enough. Of of Tottenham and beat them, especially since this is at, at St. James's Park. Yeah, 
I definitely think that. You think they can keep a clean sheet? I mean, they've been solid at home, but I think defensively, they're very fragile. Um, I, I just don't know how much Trippier can push forward with Son seemingly coming into form. I, I personally don't see a clean sheet happening this game. And again, like you mentioned, Newcastle need to be clinical. They were wasteful against United too, uh, like two, three weeks ago. They should have been up two, three in the first half. Only took to, what, 64th minute to get the first goal. So they need to be clinical. Yeah, as a team collectively, they really do. There's players like St. Maximin who just, we know as a player, he's just not a clinical player. But then there's players like Almiron who has proven to get the goals and assists this season, but then recently has just been, you know, a little bit, you know, not sharp, you know, just a second late. And it's like, What's going on with Newcastle? Callum Wilson, where he has experience, he can come in and do a shift. And Isaac, really, that's the player we're looking at here. He's the one. I see him creating. I see him getting some shots off. But are we looking? Are we looking at him and saying, does he need to contribute more? Does he need to get more involved in goals? Well, he certainly has contributed enough in the last few weeks. Last game, it dried up against Villa, but I think he's been on a good scoring form. He scored two against Forest. He scored against us too. Uh, I mean, Isaac was injured. He's he's coming back on form. They're gonna need him. They're gonna need him because he was signed for what sixty million pounds, and he was injured for most of the first half of the season. So they're gonna need him. Uh, they're gonna be hoping that the Villa game was just a blip, and hopefully, uh, Isaac can get back on the scoring sheets against Tottenham. Yeah, he's the main man. So this is this is what you expect from him. I mean, what seventy five million for him? Come on, like that's big money, right? So let's see, let's see if he can produce the goods. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Now moving on to uh, the quick fire. I mean, we've got some crucial games in the in the relegation battle. Fulham hosting Leeds in the early kickoff. Can I go with a two two choice? Can I go with a Fulham win or tie? If not, I'm leaning towards a tie in this one. I'm leaning towards a Fulham victory here. Although Fulham did lose to Everton two weeks ago, one no. Everton another relegation threatened side. Uh, so we'll see. Fulham have lost a bit without Mitrovic, but Brentford against Villa, Ollie Watkins traveling to his to his old. To his former team. And I would say he's going to go there and hunt them and produce the goods. And I think Villa is going to win this one. Yeah, hard to see anything other than a Villa victory here. Crystal Palace rejuvenated under the oldest manager in the league, Roy Hodgson, hosting Everton. Similarly to the Fulham Leeds one, I'm in between a draw and a Crystal Palace win. Again, with the home side. But, again, having to choose one, this time I'm going to lead for the home side to come out victorious. I will probably go for a draw. Lastly, Leicester, who are deeply in trouble, hosting Wolves. Again, another tough one. Like all, all of those are just except for the Villa one is tough. This is why the Premier League pick'em is so. I mean, the, the prize is fifty k, right? It's insane. It, yeah, like yeah, seriously. Yeah, that one you have to guess every score right, right? Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? Somebody has anybody ever won that? Uh, I've seen some very near close ones. Uh, you know, the last game of the weeks. Um. You know, they, they tell you how many people are still left and what the score needs to be for them to win. I've never seen it personally whenever that's popped up. I don't know if there was. So we'll see. But this but, game, yeah, I mean, I, I, just, I think Leicester are in trouble. I think they're going to suffer another defeat. I'm leaning towards that draw, to be honest. Fair enough. And I lied, that wasn't last match. Uh, Bournemouth. Fresh off of a, a great victory at Tottenham, hosting West Ham. Such a tight match again, yet again. But I'm leaning towards Bournemouth. 
Yeah, same as well. They've impressed me last week. There's there's very few games because of the three of the Premier League sides being involved in the FA Cup action. But this upcoming midweek, we have some huge games coming up. So tune into our review where we will be also previewing those huge matches. That's all we have time for today. Guys, thanks for tuning in as always. We hope you enjoyed your time with us. Remember to subscribe, to leave comments and share with your friends. Follow us on social media at FOTBPod. Don't forget to leave a review, rating and most importantly, don't forget to turn on those notifications. Join us again next time as we discuss the highly anticipated upcoming Premier League action. Thanks again as always. See you then.